This teaching you're about to listen to was preached by Jagede Sunday E and recorded live at God's Family Bible Church, Trinidad. Jagede Sunday E is the general coordinator of Arabs of Revival Ministries and the School of Discipleship. He is also the missionary pastor of GFBC Trinidad under the leadership of Pastor Abology Akimbo, the general overseer of God's Family Bible Church Worldwide, Palm Coast, Florida. Listen and be transformed. Our Father, I want to thank you, Lord, for uh, the gift of life. I want to thank you, Lord, for your blessing that we'll enjoy it on a daily basis. I want to thank you, Lord, for sending the Holy Spirit to dwell with us, to be in us, to abide with us forever. And to empower us, to enable us to live the life that we have planned for our life. Our Father, as we continue on our teaching series, are living a supernatural life. We pray, Father, that will help us to begin to see, to begin to understand, and to begin to appropriate our supernatural provision and supply that you have made available for us in Christ and through Christ to live a supernatural life. Bless your word in our heart this morning. For in Jesus mighty name we pray i want you to say loud amen yeah. amen glory be to jesus i'm so excited uh, to have you in the house of god this morning and if you have been following we have been on a teaching series that we call living a supernatural life living a higher life living a life that is beyond ordinary living the life that god has ordained for you all right and so we are making progress this morning and this is living a supernatural life part three all right and uh, there are so many truths that we have examined from those walls and we have been able to establish uh, in our mind and let me quickly refresh your memory i uh, we said god planned for his children to live a supernatural life god planned for you to live a life that is higher that is superior to the life that those who don't know christ who don't have christ live all right so you don't plan to live an ordinary life don't plan to live a normal life the life that god planned for you is the same life that jesus lived when he came into this world you understand what i'm talking about so god planned for us to live like his son jesus god planned for you to live above sickness god planned for you to live above sin you, you understand what i'm talking about god planned for you to live a life that will challenge other people god planned for you to live a life that will bring glory and honor to god that will bring praise to god god planned for us to live a life that the unbeliever will say wow i desire to live like that even in the midst of storm you don't lose your peace you are not troubled like all you understand we do evil to you and you don't do evil to us in return all right that's the life that god wants us to live that we love not just our friends and our family but all also, we love our enemy, all right? Just like God loves us, even when we were his enemy. That is the life that God wants us to live. And that is the Christian life. The Christian life is a supernatural life. The Christian life is not an ordinary life. It's not a normal life that other people can live. It's a life that you cannot live without God. You, you understand what I'm talking about? So God planned for us to live a supernatural life. God expects us to live a supernatural life. That's why the scripture says in Ephesians chapter 5, 1 and 2, it said, therefore, be imitators of God as their children and walk in love, as Christ also as lovers, and giving himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet smelling aroma. So we are called to imitate God. So when we say we are Christian, you understand? So we need to know that we are followers of God, we are imitators of God, and it's expected of us to walk in his footsteps. To live just as he lived while he was in the world. You understand what I'm talking about? Now, we are not expected. God does not expect us to live a life different from the life that God lived when he came in Christ Jesus uh, into this world. That's the life. And do you know one good thing about me? God does not expect us to live this supernatural life 
out of our own strength, human strength or wisdom, no, God has equipped us, God has thoroughly furnished us to live this life that he expected of all. We have the life of God. So right from the moment you confess Jesus as the Lord and Savior, God changed our nature. God gave us his own nature, his own godly nature. We became partakers of the divine nature of God. God gave us his own life, superior life, life. and not only that, God gave us his own spirit. You understand? So we have the spirit of God uh, living in us to enable us, to empower us to live the life that God wants us to live. You, you understand what I'm talking about? So we have God's spirit living in us so that we can live like God in this world. That's what I'm saying. I have God's spirit in me so that I may live like God in this world. Alright? So as Christians, we are thoroughly equipped to live the life that God wants us to live. We have been able to establish this truth. We say living a supernatural life implies living in the spirit and walking in the spirit. All right, and we have established that as we see it from the book of Romans chapter 8, the book of Romans chapter 8 from verse 9, that as Christians, we are no longer in the flesh, but now we are in the spirit, all right? That we are not just natural people anymore, okay? Now that... You need to know that you are now in Christ. We share his identity now. Alright, we are united with Christ. We share his life. We share his nature. We are joined ears with him. We have the spirit of Christ in us. Alright, we are regenerated. We are recreated. We are new being. We are new creation in Christ Jesus. Alright, now the Bible says, Romans chapter 8 from verse 9, but you are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If indeed the spirit of God dwells in you. Now, if anyone does not have the spirit of Christ, is none of his. Hallelujah. Now, listen to this. Listen to this very well. I've said this uh, before, that living in the spirit is different from walking in the spirit, all right? That it is possible for you, even though now you are new creation in Christ, all right, and you have the spirit of God in you, it's possible for you to still be living as though you don't have it. And there are many Christians that though they are regenerated, they are new creation in Christ, they are not living according to their new identity. They are not living according to their new start, all right? Now, so we have the Spirit of God, and God expects us to live by the Spirit. God expects us not to trust in our ability, all right? Not to trust in our natural ability, not just to trust in our wisdom, in our effort, all right? But that we draw strength from the Spirit. That we rely on the Holy Spirit. Are you listening to me? That we live by the help of the Spirit. And that is what it means to walk in the Spirit or to walk according to the Spirit. The Bible says 2 Corinthians chapter 5 from verse 16. Therefore from now on we regard no one according to the flesh. Even though we have known Christ according to the flesh, yet now we know him thus no longer. Now what is Paul talking about? Paul is saying before... Now, people look at Jesus, now listen to him, even his disciples, when they see Jesus, they look at him as ordinary man. Are you listening to me? They don't see him as God. They look at him from human point of view. They judge him from human point of view. Now, but Paul is saying, when we have a, a revelation on it, we know that even though we see Jesus, now listen to me, that is God in the flesh. Now, in the same way now, you need to begin to see yourself. That's why it's saying verse 17, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, is a new creation. Let's all say, I'm in Christ. I'm a new creation. Alright, so all things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. So don't see yourself as natural person anymore. Are you listening to what? You are not just a mere human being anymore. Now you are in Christ. You now have the Spirit of God in you. You are now a spiritual person. You are a new creation. You have the new life of God. You have a new nature. And you have a new spirit. You have the Spirit of God indwelling you. Alright? So don't look at yourself. Don't, don't judge yourself according to the flesh. Alright? Now the unbeliever, they may look at you. Now that you are born again, and they say, well, ah, there's no difference in your life. You still look the same, all right? But you need to know that you are no longer the same person anymore. If anyone is in Christ, he does not remain the same. He becomes a new creation. He has a new spirit. Are you listening to me? He has a new life, and he has the spirit of God dwelling in him. 
And God wants us to begin to respond to the Spirit and let the Holy Spirit begin to lead us, guide us, and control us. Now, all these and many more we have considered uh, in the first two parts of this series. And I just want us to make progress, alright? This is living a supernatural life, living the life that God designed for you, living the life that God intended for you, living the life that God has equipped you for. A supernatural life, a superior life, a higher life. Are you listening to me? The life that God himself lived when he came into the world in the person of Jesus Christ. Alright? Now listen to this. It is absolutely impossible to live a supernatural life without the Spirit of God, without the Spirit of God. Now, and that is why God sent us His Spirit. It is impossible to live a supernatural life without the Spirit of God indwelling in you. That is why the unbeliever cannot live the life of Christ. Do you know why? Because they don't have the Spirit of Christ in them. That is why when you expect unbeliever to live like Christ, you'll be disappointed. They can't. Alright? Because they don't have what it takes. So it takes the Spirit of God to live the life of God. It takes the Spirit of Christ to live the life of Christ. Are you listening to me? It takes the Spirit of God. So without the Holy Spirit, no one can live the life that God expects of him. Now look at what Jesus said in the book of John 16, the book of John 16 verse 7. Without the Spirit of God, you cannot live the life that God planned for you the life that God ordained for you, the life that God expects of you. In John chapter 16, look at it from verse 7. Jesus was about to be crucified, he was about to leave his disciple, and his disciple became very sorrowful. And Jesus began to comfort them. And look at what he said in verse 7. Jesus said, Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away. It is to your benefit that I go away, for if I do not go away, the helper will not come. The Holy Spirit, the Comforter, will not come. But if I depart, I will send him to you. Can you see Jesus here, you know, uh, sharing this profound truth uh, with his disciples? He said, guys, I'm about to leave and you are sorrowful. It's because you do not know what you are about to get. He said it is beneficial, it is expedient, it is better, it is to your advantage if I go away. Because if I do not go away, then you are not going to have the Holy Spirit dwelling with you. Can you imagine Jesus is saying, having the Holy Spirit live in you, live with you, is better than having me dwell among you. Are you listening to what I'm talking about? Because while Jesus was in the flesh, he was limited, alright? He was limited in the body, even though he's fully God. Are you listening to me? Now, he can't be in two, three places at the same time. Are you listening to what I'm talking about? There are limitations to people he could read. There are limitations to what he could do because he had to be there personally. You, you understand what I'm talking about? He had to meet people personally. But yet Jesus, he said, look, when I leave, I'm going to send you the Holy Spirit. Look at John chapter 14, John chapter 14. So having the Holy Spirit indwelling us, abiding with us, is much more better than having Jesus in a person dwelling among us. Alright? Now John chapter 14, John chapter 14, I read from verse 16 here. Look at what Jesus said to his disciples. He said, I will pray the Father and I will give you another helper. Another comforter like me. Another teacher like me. Uh, I is going to give you another advocate like me. Another guide like me. That he may abide with you forever. Let's say forever. Forever. Alright. When Jesus was with his disciples, it was for a short time. Alright. But now he said to your advantage, the Holy Spirit will come. And once he comes, he's not going to leave. He's going to abide with you forever. Verse 17, he said, the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him. But you know him, for he dwells with you and will be in you. Let someone say, the Holy Spirit dwells with me. The Holy Spirit is in me. Alright, Jesus said, I will not leave your friends, I will come to you. So he said, the Holy Spirit will come, he will dwell with you, not just with you, it will be in you. It will be in you. 
And believe me, that's what it takes to live a supernatural life. 1 Corinthians chapter 2 verse 2, I said, Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit who is from God. Alright? If you are going to live the life that God planned for you, then you must have the spirit who is from God. Who is from God. That we might know the thing that has been freely given to us by God. So I want you to know that once you believe and confess Jesus as the Lord and Savior, once you invite Jesus to be your Lord, then the Spirit of God, the Spirit of Christ, the Holy Spirit comes to dwell in you. Are you listening to what I'm talking about? That's why Paul said you have received not the Spirit who is from the world, the Spirit of the world, but the Spirit who is from God. Let's say I have the Spirit of God. The Spirit of God. Alright, so as Christians, as children of God, as born again believers, we have received the Spirit of God. The Spirit will come from God. And our body is now the temple of God. 1 Corinthians 3.16 Paul queries uh, the Christian at Christ. said, do you not know that you are the temple of God and that the Spirit of God dwells in you? I want to know, I said, the Spirit of God dwells in me. I want to say, Lord, I said, the Spirit of God, the Spirit of God dwells in me. So you have what it takes to live the life that God planned for you. It takes the Spirit of God and you now have the Spirit of God dwells in you. But listen to this, listen to this. It is possible to have the Spirit of God dwells in you and yet still live as though you don't have it. I still live a natural, ordinary life. Unfortunately, there are many Christians, there are many believers today that have the Spirit of God lives in them and so have all that it takes to live higher life, supernatural life, to live the life that God planned for them. But because they do not know that they have the Spirit of God living in them, listen to this, because they do not know who the Spirit of God is, what the Spirit of God has come to do. So they live their life as, as they used to, they live the ordinary, natural, normal life they used to live. You have the Holy Spirit, supernatural spirit. Are you with me? You have the Spirit of God lives in you, and everything that Christ did while He was on earth, you can do now. Because it is the Spirit of God that empowers it. You can live above sin, you can live above sickness. Are you with me? You can live the life that God planned for you because the Spirit of God now dwells in you. So we need to know the Spirit of God that dwells in all. Now, your perception of the Spirit of God, your revelation, your knowledge, your understanding of who lives in you, the Holy Spirit, determines your relationship with Him. Are you listening to what I'm talking about? Now, even though He lives in you, and Jesus said, we never leave you. Right from the point that you gave your life to Jesus and you experienced the new bar, the Spirit of God came to live in you. Are you listening to what I'm talking about? But how you perceive Him? Now, who you know Him to be, what you know Him to be, are you listening to me? Now, affect how you relate with Him. He may be there in your life, seeking to you, seeking to help you, seeking to guide you. Are you listening to me? With all the power of God at your disposal, but because you do not know how he speaks, you do not pay attention. Are you listening to me? And so you live a life of confusion like those who don't have the Holy Spirit. Now, you continue to fail and to fall, and you listen to me, into sin, and you struggle with sin, even though you have supernatural power of God within you at your disposal. Because when the Spirit of God comes to dwell in you, the power of God is made available to you. And you listen to what I'm talking about, but because you do not know the Holy Spirit and how to relate with Him, how to appropriate His power, then you live struggling with sin, struggling with sickness, struggling with the devil. Even though you have supernatural power. You have power that is above all the power of the enemy. So it is so important, now listen to it, now not just to have the Holy Spirit, but to relate well with the Holy Spirit. To have a right perception of who the Holy Spirit is. Are you listening to what I'm talking about? I can overemphasize this. And that is why in this uh, Living a Supernatural Life Part 3, I'm going to focus on the Holy Spirit. I want you to know who the Holy Spirit is. I want you to know who or what the Holy Spirit is not. 
Are you listening to me? I want you to understand what the Holy Spirit has come to do in your life. Are you with me? So that you can let him do it. So that you can begin to relate with him, fellowship with him, and begin to enjoy his ministry. If you do not know the Holy Spirit, you will not be able to enjoy his ministry. You will not be able to appropriate his wisdom, his power, his anointing, his gift that he makes available unto you. Now listen to me, right from the point you became born again, God sent his spirit. The Paul just said it, I read to you the scripture, that we have received the spirit who is from God. You have received the Holy Spirit. There are many Christians that are still praying to have the Holy Spirit. First Corinthians 2 12, Paul said, We have received the Spirit who is from God. We have received Him. Are you listening to what I'm talking about? So, what you need to do is to know who you have received now. Are you listening to me? Is to know His mission, to know His ministry, to know His nature, to know His, his charity, to know His attribute, to know how to surrender to Him, how to relate with Him, how to cooperate with Him. Are you listening to what I'm talking about? So, if you do not know the Holy Spirit, you will not be able to cooperate with him. You will not be able to yield to him. You will not be able to surrender to him. You will not be able to submit to him. And then your life just becomes an ordinary life. Are you with me? Alright, so now let's start with what or who the Holy Spirit is now. It's so important to have a right perception, right revelation, understanding, knowledge of who the Holy Spirit is. But let's start with who or what is not. There are many Christians, there are many believers that have a wrong perception of the Holy Spirit. Alright? They regard the Holy Spirit as just uh, an inanimate object, as a mere thing. No, the Holy Spirit is not just a mere thing. The Holy Spirit, so, some Christians regard the Holy Spirit as just a wind, a mighty wind. No, the Holy Spirit is not a mighty wind. Some regard the Holy Spirit as fire of God. No, the Holy Spirit is not fire of God. Some regard the Holy Spirit as water or rivers of living water. No, that's not what the Holy Spirit, that's not who the Holy Spirit. Some people regard the Holy Spirit as oil. So when they carry a bottle of oil, they think that is the Holy Spirit in the bottle. No, that's not the Holy Spirit. All right? Some people regard the Holy Spirit as a ball, as a door. No, the Holy Spirit is not a door. Some regard the Holy Spirit as anointing. All right? Are you with me? All right. So they think the Holy Spirit is anointing of God. No, the Holy Spirit is not an anointing of God. Some just regard the Holy Spirit as a spiritual force, as a spiritual power. No, the Holy Spirit is not a spiritual force, it's not a spiritual power. Some people regard the Holy Spirit as God's messenger. You understand? As, as being subservient to God, as a servant of God, the Holy Spirit is not a servant of God. And I wanted to see what the scripture says about it. Look at the book of Acts of Apostles, chapter 2. So we are looking at who what the Holy Spirit is not. Alright? Act of Apostles chapter 2. Look at it from the swamp. The Bible said when the day of Pentecost had fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. Alright? The disciples expecting the Holy Spirit, the promise of the Father. So we are reading here at uh, the first place, at uh, the first time that the Holy Spirit was poured out upon the chalk. Now this marked the bath of the chalk. The New Testament church, all right? So the disciples, 120 people, they gathered together in the upper room, all right, expecting the promise of the Father. Look at verse 2 now. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven, as of a rushing mighty wind. And he filled the whole house where they were sitting, and there appeared to them divided tongue as of fire. And one sat upon each of them, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit, and began to speak with all the tongue, as the Spirit gave them utterance. Now, when you look at this scripture very closely, you realize that the scripture used a mighty, a uh, Russian mighty wind, now to, uh, uh, as a metaphor, that this is to signal the coming of the Holy Spirit, but that is not what the Holy Spirit is. Now, all these things are just metaphor that I use to as a, a, a designation, no, just to represent uh, the, the coming of the Holy Spirit or the ministry or the nature or the power or what the Holy Spirit can do. Are you listening to what I'm talking about? That's what all these things are. They're just metaphor. So, when the Holy Spirit was coming, it came with a sound as of a rushing mighty wind. Now, that tells you that nothing can stop it. Just like nothing can stop a mighty rushing wind. You, you understand what I'm talking about? Alright? Now, and he said he divided himself 
like a fire. So they see a cloven tongue, a divided tongue of fire on their head. I, I use it today as a symbol, but that is not really what the Holy Spirit is. That symbolizes the coming of the Holy Spirit, but that is not what the Holy Spirit is. That's not who the Holy Spirit is. So the Holy Spirit is not just fire. The Holy Spirit is not wind. Are, are you with me? His work is like fire. It purifies, it sanctifies, it places, it gives seal. Are you listening to me? But that is not what the Holy Spirit is. That's not who the Holy Spirit is. Look at John chapter 7. Now Jesus, on the last day, the great day of the feast, from verse 37, Jesus stood and cried and said, If anyone tests, let him come to me and drink. He will believe in me, as the scripture has said, out of his heart will flow rivers of living water. Verse 39 I say, But this is spoke concerning the Spirit, whom those believing in him will receive. For the Holy Spirit was not yet given because Jesus was not yet glorified. Alright? So some people think the Holy Spirit is the rivers of living water. No. Now the Bible says here, Jesus said, Well, those who believe in me, out of their belly will flow. Rivers of living and he spoke concerning the spirit. He didn't say the Holy Spirit is going to be rivers of living water. But he said, when the Holy Spirit comes, that's what he's going to He's going to give life. And you listen to what I'm talking about. He's going to minister comfort. He's going to be a comforter. He's going to uh, impart life onto people. And you listen to what I, but that is not, so the Holy Spirit is not water. The Holy Spirit is not river. So if somebody put water in the bottle and say, that is the Holy Spirit. No, that's not the Holy Spirit. It's not fire, it's not wind. The Holy Spirit is not water. In Matthew chapter 3, when Jesus was baptized, as he was coming from the water, the Bible said the heavens were open, and John saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove. Now, you didn't say, and the Holy Spirit, or the Spirit of God, he said, no, he said, it's like a dove, like a dove, all right? That's a metaphor, all right? It's like a dove, alighting upon him, descending upon him. Are you listening to me? So, the Holy Spirit is not a God, the Holy Spirit is not a dove. Now, Acts chapter 1 verse 8, Jesus told his disciples, he said, you shall receive power. Take note of that. When the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem, in all Judea, in Samaria, and to the end of the earth. So the Holy Spirit, when he comes, he gives power. Are you listening to me? But power is not who the Holy Spirit is. Are you with me? When he comes, his presence brings power. Alright, now you receive the Holy Spirit, so you have the power of God, but the Holy Spirit is not power, but His presence is dwelling in you, make those power available unto you. Do you understand what I'm talking about? But He's much more than that. He's not an anointing. But when you receive the Holy Spirit, you receive an enablement. That's what we call the anointing. And you listen to what I'm talking about. But the Holy Spirit, that's not what He is. He makes power available, he makes supernatural ability available, he makes gifts, supernatural gifts available, but he is not supernatural gift. That is what he gives, that is what he empowers. Are you listening to what I'm talking about? His mercy is like rivers of living water, uh, to a soul that is thirsty in the wilderness. But that's not what the Holy Spirit is, that's what he does. Uh, are you with me? It's not fire, but when he comes into your life, he purifies you. Are you listening to me? He gives you zeal for God, burning love, burning desire for God. Are you listening to me? But it's not fire, it's not fire. That's what he does. Alright, so we see all this metaphor depicts the nature, depict the mission, or the ministry, or the attribute of the Holy Spirit. But the Holy Spirit is not 18. Are you with me? The Holy Spirit is a living person. And so I want us to look at the Holy Spirit, the personality of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is a living person, alright? So, when you receive the Holy Spirit, you are not just receiving a thing. You are not receiving a fire, a water, an anointing, a power. Are you with me? You are receiving a living person. It's a personality. Do you understand what I'm talking about? It's so important because if you regard the Holy Spirit as a thing, then you will relate with Him as you relate with a thing. If you regard Him as a fire, Alright, then you don't fellowship with him. Are you listening to me? You don't speak with him. You, you understand what I'm talking about? Because he's just a fire, he's just an oil, he's just a water, he's just a wind. You, you understand what I'm talking about? You don't surrender to him, you don't submit to him, you don't yield to him, you don't cooperate with him, you don't listen to him, you don't speak with him, because he's just a thing. But I'm telling you from God's word that the Holy Spirit which you have received is not a thing, he's a living being, he's a living personality, he's a living person.
All right? And I'm going to show you from the scripture now uh, uh, the personality or the, the attribute of the Holy Spirit as a living person. All right? Look at what Jesus said in John chapter 14. John chapter 14, 15 to 18. The book of John chapter 14. The Holy Spirit is a living person. And let's see from the scripture the personality of the Holy Spirit. The personal attribute, characteristics of the Holy Spirit. All right? Now look at what Jesus himself said from verse 15. John 14 from verse 15. If you love me, keep my commandment. And I will pray the Father and I will give you another helper. All right? Say another person like me. Advocate, comforter. That he, now look at the pronoun Jesus used. He said that he, he didn't say that he is. Alright, so the Holy Spirit is a person. That's why you use the pronoun he for him, that he may abide with you forever. The Spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor know him. Can you see? The scripture used him a pronoun, a personal pronoun for the Holy Spirit, but you know him, for he dwells with you and it will be in you. Alright? So you see here, yeah, Jesus saying to all, the Holy Spirit is not a name. It's not an inanimate object. The Holy Spirit is a living person. And a personal pronoun is used for the Holy Spirit. I want you to look at that word. Now listen to this. Jesus said, I will send you another helper. Another comforter. The Greek word for that helper or comforter is called parakletos. Now I want you to listen to what it means in Greek. When Jesus said another helper, what does it mean? Now he's saying it means parakletos in Greek means Call to one side, to one head. So Jesus said, someone is coming to your side, to your hill. All right? It's not a thing, it's a person. Now, it means one who plead another one's cause before a judge. It means a legal assistant. So, Paracletos is used in the New Testament to represent a legal assistant, an advocate. That cannot be a thing. Are you listening to me? That has to be a human being. I mean, that has to be a living person. Do you understand what I'm talking about? A legal ass a a assistant, an advocate. One who plead another cause with one, an intercessor. If the only thing is a fire, it cannot intercede for you. It cannot plead, it cannot be your advocate. Now, in a wider sense, it's used as a helper. So the Holy Spirit is a helper, he's a succorer, he's a head that is an assistant, all right? He has to be a living personality, he has to be a living person to do that, all right? If it's just a wind, it can't help you. If it's just a fire, a oil, a water, it can't help you. He has to be a living person, you, you understand? So when Jesus said, I'm going away, but I'm going to send you another helper. Jesus said, I'm going to send you another living person like me, a comforter like me. An advocate like me, someone that is going to help you just like I helped you when I was in the war. Are you listening to me? I'm going to send you a teacher like myself that's going to teach you just like I taught you when I was with you. That's what Jesus was saying to his disciples. So the Holy Spirit is not a thing, it's not an object, it's a living person, all right? And let's see what it can do as a living person. Alright, so as a living person, the Holy Spirit can hear, he can speak, he can lead, he can guide. He has knowledge, he can search, he can reveal, he can teach, he can testify, he can decide, he can choose. He has his mind, he has his will, and he's capable of emotions, alright? Let's see what the scripture says about this. John chapter 16, the book of John chapter 16. I've told you the context of this. Jesus was about going away. The disciple became sorrowful. And Jesus began to comfort them. And he told them from verse 7. John 16 from verse 7. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away. Because for I, if I do not go away, the helper, that is the Holy Spirit, will not come to you. But if I depart, I will send him to you. And when he has come, he will convey the word of sin, of righteousness, of judgment. He's talking about his ministry to the world now, of sin, because they do not believe in me, alright? He's not talking to uh, the believers now, he's talking about what the Holy Spirit uh, will do in the world, uh, his ministry towards the unbeliever. He said, he will convict them of sin, alright? He does not convict believers of sin, he convicts those who do not believe in Christ. Of righteousness, because I go to my Father and you see me no more. Of judgment, because the ruler of this one is John. Now look at it from verse 2, verse 12, very closely. John 16 from verse 12, let's look at it very closely. Jesus said, I still have many things 
to say to you, but you cannot bear them now because of sorrow. They can't bear, they, 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 they don't have what the capacity to receive. Uh, those truth from verse 13, I said, however, when he, he, all right, the spirit of truth has come, he will guide you into all truth, for he will not speak on his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak, and he will tell you things to come. He will glorify me, for we take up what is mine and declare it to you. Can you see the personal attribute and characteristics of the Holy Spirit? Jesus said, what he hears, he will speak. So, he will hear, he will speak. If it's just 18, he cannot hear, he cannot speak. You understand what I'm talking about? If it's just a wind, a fire, a water, a hole, uh, he cannot hear, he cannot speak. But Jesus said, he will hear and he will speak. He will speak. So the Holy Spirit can hear, so you can talk with the Holy Spirit. You understand what I'm talking about? You can talk with the Holy Spirit. He can speak. You can listen to the Holy Spirit. And in, in the next uh, part, that's what we begin to look at. How to hear, how to, to relate with the Holy Spirit. How to enjoy the ministry of the Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit is here, and He can hear, He can speak with us. Not only that, Jesus said He can guide us. He will guide us into all truth. Now, it takes a living person to guide. You, you understand? Now, a thing cannot guide you, alright? So He will guide you, He will lead you. Romans 8, 14, Paul says, For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are the Son of God. So the Holy Spirit can guide us, the Holy Spirit can lead us. You understand? And next week we're going to look at how he leads, how he guides practically. Not only that he has knowledge, he can teach, he can reveal things to us. Uh, 1 Corinthians 2 verse 10 Paul says, but God has revealed them to all things that the uh, Old Testament saint and prophet, things that they did not know, things that they did not understand, the gospel truth. He said God has revealed them to us through his spirit. So you see, the Holy Spirit can reveal things to us because He's a living person. For the Spirit searches all things. Yes, the deep things of God. It takes a living person to do that. For what man knows the things of a man except the Spirit of man which is in him? Even so, no one knows the things of God except the Spirit of God. Now we have received, not the Spirit of the world, but three wills from God, that we might know the things that have been freely given to us by God. So you see, the Holy Spirit has knowledge in those things, alright? And He's here to teach us, alright? In John 14, verse 26, Jesus said that, but He helped out the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, He will teach you. Can you see? He will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all things that I said to you. That's part of his ministry, to teach you the truth, to teach you all things, all things. Oh, you seem confused, you don't know what to do, uh, the right decision to make. The Holy Spirit is here to guide you, to teach you, to make the right decision. Are you listening to me? The career to choose, the husband to marry, the wife to marry, the kind of profession to choose, where to go, where to live. Are you listening to what I'm talking about? The Holy Spirit can teach you all this, because it's a living person. Because he is God, all right? And Jesus said, he will bring all things to your remembrance that I have said to you. John 15, 26 said, But when the earth has come, whom I shall send to you from my Father, the Spirit of the who proceed from the Father, he will testify of me. He will show you who I am. He will reveal who I am to you. That's what Jesus is saying. So the Holy Spirit can testify. He's there to testify of Christ, to teach us who Jesus is. You want to know Jesus deeper, then you need to talk with the Holy Spirit. You need to listen to the Holy Spirit. He's here to reveal Jesus to all. He's here to show us who Jesus is. All right? Not only that, the Holy Spirit has his own will. All right? He has his own desire. First Corinthians 12 verse 11. Now Paul talking about the gift of the Spirit here. Yeah? He said, but one and the same Spirit works all these things. Distributing to each one individually as he will. The Holy Spirit gives us his gift as he will, as he desire. Alright? So he has his own will. He has his own will. In Acts of Apostles, chapter 13, verse 2. Here, yeah, Paul says, uh, uh, look here, he's telling us. Uh, about what happened uh, when uh, the prophet and the teachers gathered uh, in those days. Say, as a minister to the Lord and Father, the Holy Spirit said, Now all separate to me, Barnabas and Saul, for the work to which I have called them. There are many people there, but the Holy Spirit chose 
Barnabas and Saul. That just is a living person. He has his own desire. He has his own will. He can choose. And you listen to what I'm talking about. So he chose uh, Barnabas and Saul for the work that he has called them to do. There is this capable of emotion, all right? He can love you. He has love. Paul revealed this to us in Romans 15, verse, verse 13, when he talks about the love of the Spirit. Said, Now I beg you, brethren, through the Lord Jesus Christ and through the love of the Spirit, that you strive together with me in prayer to God for me. The love of the Spirit. So the only thing he has love, he can show you love. You, you understand what I'm talking about? He's capable of that. In fact, the Bible says in Romans 5 that the Holy Spirit shared that love, the love of God in our heart. So the Holy Spirit has love and he can give love. He can feel love also. You, you understand? So he's a living person. I'm reading this scripture showing you from the word of God that the Holy Spirit is not a thing. So don't relate with him as a thing. He's a living person. Relate with him as a living person. So as Christian, you have a living person. The Spirit of God living in you. Who is capable of emotion. Who has his will. Who has love. Who can be loved. Who can love you. You, you understand what I'm talking about? And so relate with him as so. The Holy Spirit also can be grieved. He can be grieved. That's why Paul warned us in Ephesians chapter 4 verse 30, he said, Do not grieve the Holy Spirit by whom you are sealed for the day of redemption. Do not grieve the Holy Spirit. So it means it can be grieved. It can also be insulted. That's why the Hebrew writer warned us not to insult the Spirit of grace. So from all this scripture that we have considered, we can see that the Holy Spirit is not an object. It's not a thing. It's not an inanimate object. Is a living personality. You understand? He can hear, he can see, he can teach, he can guide, he can lead, he has knowledge, he can teach, and you listen, he can testify, he can show us things, he can remind us of things to come, things that Jesus has said, he can show us things to come. He has capacity to love, he has emotion, he can be grieved, he can be loved, he can be insulted. And you listen to what I'm talking about, he can be grieved. All right, now listen to this. As I close, not only is the Holy Spirit a living person, the Holy Spirit is a divine person. Now what that means is that He's God, the Holy Spirit is God. The Holy Spirit is not just a living person, a mere living He's actually God. So let's look at the deity of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is God. Listen to this. It's not a messenger of God. Now you need to know this if you are going to relate well with the Holy Spirit. If you don't know that the Holy Spirit is a divine person, He is God, you will not submit to Him. You will not respect Him. Are you listening to me? You will not fellowship with Him as God. You will not yield to Him. You will not surrender to Him. You will not enjoy His ministry. So when the Holy Spirit comes to live in you, it's not just a living person, it's a divine person. It's God himself that comes to dwell in us. He's not a servant of God that comes to dwell in us. He's not a messenger of God. Are you listening to me? He's God Almighty. So as Christians, when we receive the Holy Spirit, do you know who we receive? We receive God himself. God himself. And I'm going to show you from the scripture that the Holy Spirit is God, is God. So as Christians, you have God living in you. Are you listening to me? Not a subservient uh, uh, spirit. Alright? Not a, a, a messenger of God. Not a spirit or a, a, a living person that is lower uh, to God. No. The Holy Spirit is equal with God the Father, is equal to God the Son in every respect. Now look at Acts chapter 5, look at what happened here in Acts of Apostles chapter 5, and look at what Peter said. Acts of Apostles chapter 5, we read verses 1 to 4 quickly. Acts of Apostles chapter 5, now, but a certain man named Ananias and Sapphira is what? So the possession, you remember in the early church, there was a time that the Spirit of God moved upon them, and people who are rich, they began to sell their uh, possession and their lands and their properties, and then they bring the proceeds and lay it at the feet of the apostle so that they can meet the needs uh, of the church and the brethren, all right? And then Ananiah and his wife Sapphira, they also sold their own possession, they sold their land, all right? They brought the proceeds, but not all, uh, uh, to the feet of the apostle. But they lie, you understand? And they said that's all, alright? Because they, they just wanted the praise and the applause of men, alright? The Bible says verse 2, and they kept back part of the proceeds. 
his wife also being aware of it, and they brought a certain part and laid it at the apostle feet. Now look at what Peter now said. Please look at verse 3 very closely. But Peter said, Ananiah, why has Satan filled your heart to lie to the Holy Spirit? All right? And keep back part of the price of the land for yourself. While it remained, was it not your own? And after it was so, was it not in your own control? You can choose not to give it, all right? Now, why have you conceived this thing in your heart? You have not lied to men, take note of that, but to who? But to God. You have not lied to men, but to who? To God. Now, in verse 3, he said, you have lied to the Holy Spirit. So you see, Paul here, I mean Peter here, is using God and the Holy Spirit interchangeably. Now, I just said earlier, yeah, yeah, you've lied to the Holy Spirit. And then, in the Lord of I say, you have not lied to me, but you have lied to who? To God. So, what he say? He said, the Holy Spirit is God. So, lying to the Holy Spirit is lying to God. Not submitting to the Holy Spirit is not submitting to God. So, when the Holy Spirit speaks to you quietly, and you ignore his voice, and you disobey his voice, and you listen to me, you are not just ignoring a thing, you are actually ignoring God. Are you listening to me? So when you obey the voice of God, this is not voice of the Holy Spirit, you are obeying God because the Holy Spirit is God in every aspect of it. 1 Corinthians 3, 16, 17, Paul also uses it interchangeably, the Spirit of God and God. Look at it, 1 Corinthians 3, 16 and 17. He said, do you not know that you are the temple of God and the Spirit of God dwells in you? If I say you are the temple of God and it is the Spirit of God that dwells in you. In other words, it is God that dwells in you. So, the Spirit of God is God. That's what he's talking about. So, you are the temple of God and then God has come to live in you by His Spirit. Alright? So, when we talk about the Holy Spirit, He's God. He's God. He's the Spirit of God. And you listen to me, so as Christian, as believer, you have God living in you. Yeah. You have God dwelling in you. Are you listening to me? So the Spirit of God is not a little bit of God. He's fully God. He's fully God. That's what I wanted to know. So we, it, is, it is so important, so crucial for all to have this perception, this right revelation, right perception that the Holy Spirit is not a thing. The Holy Spirit is a living person, but not just a living person, it's a divine person. Are you listening to me? That the Holy Spirit is God, fully God, is fully God. So when I have the Spirit of God living in me, I have God living in me, alright? In His fullness, in His fullness. Because if you regard the Holy Spirit as a servant of God, subservient to God, or a little lower than God, that means you don't have the fullness of God living in you. Are you with me? Alright, so you are the Holy Spirit, who is God living in you? And very quickly before we close, so what are the uh, uh, divine characteristics of the Holy Spirit as God that the scripture establishes to all the deity of the Holy Spirit? And let's quickly look at that. Now, the Holy Spirit is eternal, just like God. Now, only God is eternal, alright? Only God has no beginning or the end. Only God is unlimited by time only God is from everlasting to everlasting and the Bible regard refer to the Holy Spirit as eternal so eternality alright that's one of the attributes deity of the Holy Spirit that show that the Holy Spirit is also fully God Jesus said that when the Holy Spirit comes in John 14 16 we have looked at it before he will abide with you forever so you see the Holy Spirit is going to be forever forever. It's only God that is forever. Are you with me? It has no beginning. It has no end. In Hebrew chapter 9 verse 14, the Hebrew writer referred to the Holy Spirit as eternal spirit. Hebrew chapter 9 verse 14 says, how much more shall the blood of Christ who through the eternal spirit offer himself without spot to God cleanse the content from dead work to serve the living God. So you see, the Holy Spirit is referred to as the eternal spirit. The eternal spirit. Alright? So that shows to you that the only thing is God because God is eternal. Are you listening to me? One of the attributes of God, one of the things that make God God is eternality, alright? That's one of the nature of God, attributes of God as God. 
It has no beginning or end. It's from everlasting to everlasting. It's eternal, alright? God will continue to exist. And the same with the Holy Spirit. Omnipresence. The Holy Spirit is free from the laws of limitation of space. The Holy Spirit is present everywhere at every time. Are you listening to me? So that's why we know that the Holy Spirit is fully God because He's omnipresent. Now, the psalmist said in Psalm 139 from verse 7, say, where can I go from your spirit? Or where can I flee from your presence? But said, if I ascend into heaven, you are there. If I make my bed in hell, behold, you are there. If I take the wings of the morning and I dwell in the uttermost part of the sea, even there, your hand shall lead me and your right hand shall hold me. The Spirit of God is present everywhere and that is how we know He's God. Because it's only God that is present everywhere at every time. Are you listening to me? At the same time. That's why Jesus said, it is to your advantage that I go away. Because as at that time, Jesus was limited. Are you listening to what I'm talking about? He was limited being God in the body. He cannot be everywhere at the same time. Are you listening to me? And that's why he said, it's good that I go. It's to your advantage. It's better for you. Because now you will have the Holy Spirit. And it's going to be with you everywhere. And it's going to be in all believers at the same time. Alright? So the Holy Spirit is God because He's omnipresent. Not only that, the Holy Spirit is God because He's omnipotent. He has unlimited power. He's all powerful. He's all powerful. Are you with me? He's only God that is all powerful. And that is not in heart difficult or impossible. The same way, the Spirit of God, there is nothing hard, impossible or difficult for Him. Alright? So you have the Spirit of God in you, and there is nothing difficult or hard. As a matter of fact, Jesus revealed in Matthew 12, 28, that He cast out demons by the Spirit of God. Look at it, Matthew 12, verse 28. But if I cast out demons by the Spirit of God, surely the Kingdom of God has come upon you. Jesus said, He cast out devil by what? The Spirit of God. So you have the Spirit of God and He's in you, and that means you can cast out demons. Alright? You have power that is greater than the power of any devil. Alright? Because you have the Spirit of God lives in you. So the Spirit of God is God. In fact, Paul says in Romans chapter 15, Romans 15, 19, Paul attributed the mighty signs and wonders, the mighty ones that he did among the Gentiles to the power of God, the power of the Spirit of God. Look at what he said from verse 18. Romans 15 said, For I will not dare to speak of any of those things which Christ has not accomplished through me in word and in deed, to make the Gentiles obedient in mighty signs and wonders by the power of the Spirit of God. Can you see it's supposed to the miracles he performed, the mighty signs and wonder that Christ wrote through him, he wrote it through all the power of the Holy Spirit, the power of the Holy Spirit. Verse 19, the power of the Holy Spirit. Look at it. He said, I did it by the power of the Spirit of God. So the Spirit of God is all powerful, it's all powerful. Today, in the believers and through the believer, it is the Holy Spirit that is performing wonders and miracles. Alright? Do you understand what I'm talking about? So, when you have the Holy Spirit, you can also do mighty works. Are you with me? Because you have the power of God available to you. The Holy Spirit is only omniscience, you know. That, it, that's one of the attributes of God. He's all knowing, he's all knowing. There's nothing hidden from him. He has perfect knowledge. He has infinite understanding. And that is why Jesus said, He will teach you all things. Why? Because He knows all things. He knows all things. First Corinthians 2, we have read it before from verse 10. But God has revealed them through all through His Spirit. For the Spirit searches all things. Yes, the deep things of God. For what man know the things of man except the Spirit of the man which is in him? Even so, no one know the things of God except the Spirit of God. He knows all things. Everything that God the Father, God the Son know, the Holy Spirit knows also. That is why we know He's God in every ramification. I've read this scripture before, John 14, 26. Jesus said, when He come, He will teach you all things. All things. If He's going to teach all things, it means He knows all things. He knows all things. He will guide you into all truth. John 16, 30. If He's going to guide you into all truth, it means He knows all truth. He knows all truth. So the Holy Spirit knows all truth. He knows all things. 
And if there's anything you do not know, what do you do? Ask him. Ask him. That's why you need to have a right perception of who he is, that he is God, he knows all things. Holy Spirit has forgotten this scripture. He will quicken it, he will bring it to your remembrance. Jesus said, John 14 26, he will bring to your remembrance all things that I said to you. Take advantage of that. Take advantage of that. You have God lives in you by his spirit. By his spirit. The Holy Spirit is holy, all right? 90 places in the Bible, the Holy Spirit is referred to as the holy, the adjective holy. Holiness is one of the attributes of God, alright? God is absolutely holy. God is inherently holy. There is no unrighteousness in God. The same way with the Holy Spirit. He is called the Spirit of Holiness. In Romans chapter 1 verse 4, the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit is regarded to as the Spirit of Holiness. He is God because He's only God that is inherently holy. He's only God that is Christ holy, holy, holy. All right. Now, so the Spirit of God is God because He's inherently holy. There is no unrighteousness in Him. Luke 11, verse 13. Jesus said, If you then believe, you know how to give good gift to your children. How much more will your Heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask Him? All right. Not only that, I want to close with it. The Holy Spirit does only what God can do. That is how we know that the Holy Spirit is fully God. Do you know that the Holy Spirit is involved in creation? The Holy Spirit creates. The Holy Spirit renews. Only God can create. Job 3 verse 4. Job said, the Spirit of God has made me. And the breath of the Almighty give me life. The Spirit of God has made me. Alright? The Spirit of God is part or uh, is involved in our creation, and that's why the scripture said the Spirit of God has made me. In Psalm 104, the started the psalmist said, You send forth your spirit, they are created, and you renew the face of the earth. God is the creator, the Holy Spirit is also the creator. Are you listening to what I'm talking about? So that's why we know the Holy Spirit is God. He creates, he renews. And lastly, God is the source of life. God is the author of life. Only God quickens. Only God gives life. Alright? Because God is the source of life. Do you know the Holy Spirit also quickens? The Holy Spirit gives life. John 6 3, Jesus himself said, It is the Spirit who gives life. The flesh profits nothing. The word that I speak to you, they are spirit, they are life. It is the spirit. Who gives life? So the Holy Spirit quickens. The Holy Spirit gives life. The Holy Spirit heals. The Holy Spirit gives life. Romans 8 11, the Bible actually says, But if the Spirit of Him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, He who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal body through His Spirit who dwells in you. The same who have died on the resurrection morning, when the last trumpet shall sound, it is the Holy Spirit that will raise them. That we put in them, that we give them life, that we give them life. Only God can do that. And since the Holy Spirit will do that, He is God. He is God. So, what have I been able to establish to you in this part three is for you to begin to have a right perception, a right understanding of who the Holy Spirit is. Now, if you have received Jesus, you have the Holy Spirit, and it's not a thing. Are you listening to me? It's not a fire, it's not water, it's not just anointing, it's not oil, it's not power, it's not a spiritual force, it's a living person, and not just a mere living person, it's a divine person. So who you have received is God. I want you to rise to your feet and declare it, say in the name of Jesus. I have the Spirit of God. I have God living in me. You have the Holy Spirit. Living in you. Second Corinthians chapter 1, 21, 22. I close with this scripture. Second Corinthians 1, 21, 22. Now he who establishes us with you in Christ and has anointed us is God, who also has sealed us and given us the spirit in our heart as a guarantee. If you have believed and confessed Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you have receive the Holy Spirit. God has given you His Spirit in your heart. 
I want you to declare, say, I have the Spirit of God living in me. He is fully God. Do you believe that? Say, the Spirit of God is fully God. He's here to enable me. He's here to empower me to live like God in this world. Father, we thank you. We thank you, Lord, for sending to us your Spirit. To indwell us, to guide us into all truth, to teach us all things, to bring to our remembrance things that you have said, to testify of Christ, to reveal Christ to all, to reveal to all things that have been freely given to us by God, to enable us and to empower us to live above sin, above sickness, to live above the devil, to enable and empower us to preach the gospel with miracles, with signs and wonders following. To empower all to cast out devils. I pray, Father, in the name of Jesus, for everyone under the sound of my voice, Lord, that they will remember always that the Holy Spirit is not a thing, but that the Holy Spirit is a living person. And not just a living person, but a divine person. That the Holy Spirit is fully God. Lord, I pray, Lord, that from today, we will listen to him. We will fellowship with him. We will listen to him because we know he hears and he speaks, Lord. Lord, because we know that he has knowledge and he teach, Lord. That we will listen to his voice. We will listen to his teaching. We will cooperate with him. We will worship him as God. We will fellowship with him as God. We will pray to him as God. That we will obey him as God. That we will submit and surrender to the Holy Spirit. As God, Lord, Lord, that we will enjoy the ministry of the Holy Spirit. I pray, oh God, that from today we will not regard the Holy Spirit as just a mere anointing, as just a mere power of God, as just a mere servant of God, but we will know that He is God Almighty. I pray now, Holy Spirit, that you begin to walk in our hearts, Lord, giving life, giving strength, every sickness. In the life, in the body of those under the sound of my voice, I pray right now in the Spirit of God that such sickness be removed right now. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, the Spirit of the Lord bring healing to you this morning. The Bible says He sends His Spirit and He renews, He gives life. The Spirit of God creates and made by the Spirit of God. I pray that your spirit begin to give life to things that are dead in your life. That right now the spirit of the Lord begin to bring healing to you right now. The spirit of the Lord bring comfort to you. The spirit of the Lord strengthens you right now. The spirit of the Lord begin to help you in your area of weaknesses. All those things you are struggling with now. The spirit strengthens you to overcome them. The Holy Spirit begins to strengthen and empower you to live a life of overcomer. To live a supernatural life. To live a life free of every addiction. To live a life free of sickness. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, sweet Holy Spirit, for living in us, for dwelling in us, for abiding with us forever. Do you receive the word of God this morning? If you receive the word of God, can you shout it loud? Amen. 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 Glory be to Jesus. Hallelujah. We hope you have been challenged. Encouraged and motivated to become more like Christ by today's teaching. If you would like to find out more about Errands of Revival and get additional teachings and materials for your healthy spiritual growth, visit our website today at www.eradsofrevival.org.uk. Or if you would like to enroll at our School of Discipleship, visit our website www.theschoolofdiscipleship.org.uk This teaching was made possible by the prayers and generous free will offering, donation, and gifts from partners like you. You are welcome into partnership with us today. For information on how to become a partner, please call one 866 292 9270 or 1-868-703-5572 or you can email us at info at erasofrevival.org.uk Thanks for listening.